All right, guys, here we are. We're chilling with Larry Megan. Listen, it's a full house in the studio tonight. We got Ginger working the phone lines. We got Wing out there in the green room. I got Jonathan here as my guest. And b before Wing, before Wing, then, of course, we got Ronnie on the switchboard on the uh, engineering. So uh, we're ready to take your calls um, tonight. Um, don't go crazy. We got a lot lined up here. Uh, first off, uh, let me just start off the show quickly by telling you what you can win okay we're giving away a free watch tonight now ronnie you and i didn't have a chance to really talk much there is a graphic that we prepared at the last minute um you know wing gave us this incredible picture we need a solo shot ronnie there we go here here it is guys now this is uh, an android prototype now of course we all love android we all love wing you know, believe me, I've known Wing for six years, and, you know, from the moment I, I met him, it was love at first sight, so I know how you guys feel, okay? But he makes tremendous watches, tremendous design. He's known for his design, and he's been in the watch business for 20 years, and we're going to get into the whole thing. But I can tell you that one of his prized possessions is his prototypes. His prototypes are those watches that it's like a, a, a memento of his 20-year journey in the watch industry, and he doesn't part with them very often. And uh, for this show tonight, he said he wanted to give a prototype away to one lucky viewer. Uh, I don't even care if it's a functioning watch. I mean, I, I'm sure this one's functioning, but it doesn't matter. It's a Wing Liang Android prototype. It's his espionage skeleton. But you'll notice you never saw this one before. It's in orange. So um, he never made the orange. And that happens a lot in prototypes. You'll make, uh, you know, five executions or whatever, and you end up only making, you know, two or three. You don't necessarily make them all. And I've got a few prototypes of my own uh, from Sterling, and uh, I love those things, and I cherish them, and I know you'll cherish this, cherish this one too. Now, everybody wants to know, how do we win this watch? Well, you can see on the graphic right there, it says email to contact at acorn.tv, but hold on, not so fast. You're going to have to send an email to acorn, contact at acorn.tv, but you can't just send emails in and you're entered in the contest. You have to put in the secret word. And you don't know the secret word. So you can't email yet. Don't worry. We'll give you the secret word. I just wanted to show you what you have a chance to win. We will determine a winner tonight on the air. Okay. So that's what's coming up in about probably another 12 minutes or so. We'll get wing out here. Now, in the classic film zone tonight, we're going to make it short and sweet. It's going to be one of my all-time favorite films, Casablanca. And, um, you know, Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman, Claude Rains, and uh, Paul Reed. But, <coughs> excuse me, guys, uh, you're going to love that. We'll show a couple of quick scenes from Casablanca. And then, of course, in the Always Chasing Rainbow section at the end of the show, uh, from Judy Garland's, uh, you know, Christmas TV special in 1963, another little jewel, another little treat. We'll get to that. But the m bulk of this show tonight, and we'll stay on the air as long as, you know, we're getting calls and we're getting feedback, we're going to get to know Wing Liang up close and personal. All right. Now, that's what's coming up tonight. But before we get to any of that, let me bring in my, uh, my guest here. You just saw him for an hour on To Be Perfectly Honest. That's Jonathan Goodman. Jonathan, nice show tonight. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for you guys that are, got here a little early. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I saw guys were, you know, lining up and waiting there. But um, X Factor this week, we've been covering it all year. Yep. Not a lot of drama this week. No. No, there was tear shed, though. There's always tear shed. You know, the, the last several weeks, I've been getting really tired of the show, and I'm glad it's coming down to the finale next week with the three people yeah. that are in it. But uh, every week, it's been, you know, one surprise after another. Last week, of course, Rachel Crow got sent home, and that was a real shocker. Yeah. But um, tonight, it was as we expected. Marcus Canty. Marcus Canty. Uh, four, week four, he should have gone home. Yeah, it was about time to say goodbye to Marcus That's Canty. Here, you know? Yeah. But uh, it was the final four, you know, the semifinals. And last night they all performed two songs each. Mm -hmm. One was they called the Pepsi Challenge, which right. the viewing audience wrote in. And they just they told all the uh, through Twitter or X Factor tweets or whatever. They, however they did it. I don't get that involved in it. Uh, they told their contestants what they wanted them to sing. And quite frankly, most of those were kind of boring. It, yeah. The first round. The, uh, I, I watched them online, so I don't know what order they came in, but I was sub subsequently bored through all of them, truthfully. Uh, yeah. Even the ones that they chose for themselves. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, in the second round, they got to pick their own songs. And, you know, it was it was marginally better, but not 
any really super duper performances. You know, I'm going to show one clip tonight from the X Factor. To me, the best performance of the night was Melanie Amaro. We're going to show that. She sang Feeling Good, which is a song a lot of people have sang, Michael Bublé most recently. Yep. Uh, and I thought Melanie Amaro, she changed it up a little bit. She made it her own. I thought she did a really nice job. To me, it was the performance of the night. Let's take a look at Melanie Amaro on X Factor this week. All right. There was last night Melanie Amaro. Uh, evidently, Simon's plea there worked because Melanie got through uh, tonight. She's in the finals next week. The top three. Jonathan, the top three. Um, this is a test now. Test, test three. Uh, so the top three... Chris Renee, yep, Melanie Amaro, and Josh Kragic. And Josh Kragic, Magic Kragic. Magic Kragic. Yeah, my ex-girlfriend from New York called um, during the show. And she, like, she couldn't believe Josh, because they, they didn't do it in any particular order, right. but they made Josh sweat it out tonight. So there was a chance that he was being sent home, and my ex-girlfriend was getting upset. <laughs> and she's she knows music, by Rightly the way. So. She's a musician all right. and all that, and she's pulling for him. I'm pulling for Chris Renee. What about you? I I think you know I'm I'm torn between Josh and Melanie. Melanie's got God-given pipes, man. Yeah, you can't argue with that, and she she can do the whole gamut. Whereas Josh is kind of fixed into what he can do, and he does it well. Same thing with Chris Renee. He's kind of stuck in what he does, but he does it also yeah. really well. You know, but Melanie Morrow can kind of run the gamut and knock everybody's socks off. She's the next diva. She's the next. And uh, she's a chick. <laughs> so let's go for this no but i chris renee something about that guy uh i'm he, he just makes you feel good i see it though i, I see what you're going with and yeah. i see it all right well jonathan now next week okay next week we'll, off we'll for talk. the holiday okay you so are i'm off for the holiday next week for to okay. be perfectly honest and so okay. i won't be here either so all right well thanks uh, a lot great show tonight thanks Thank for you your help and thanks now we're going to play a little musical chairs and we're going to get the man of the hour in here right now Wing Liang is going to be jumping in the chair. Wing, don't forget your coffee. Okay. <laughs> because I want Wing to be up and ready, you know, all night long. We want to get some questions. Uh, if you want to, um, you know, speak to Wing, we will be taking calls. Wing will, you know, go live with you and all that. And uh, also, uh, if you have Skype video, we can take a video Skype call and we can go split screen with, with you. We can get you on camera here. And then also, um, we are going to talk about the watch. I want Wing to tell us about his prototype, the uh, espionage skelly, the espionage skeleton. Uh, is Wing set up now? Not quite. We've got to adjust the camera. Okay. But uh, so he's getting ready. He's getting all uh, strapped in. So all you Android heads, get ready. Uh, we're going to get a chance to uh, spend some time with Wing Liang. And, you know, like I said, um, I met Wing about six years ago. I think I, I go back to with Shop NBC about seven years, but I was probably there for a whole year before Wing and I ever actually met because we were always there at different times. Right, Wing? Uh, different time. And I always, I've always seen you on TV. And I always, wanted, I always wanted to meet you in person. And uh, I'm, I'm on right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, where should I look? This way? The camera, okay. yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks. Um, let me share this with everybody. Um, I've been in the watching industry for 20 years, but there's not that many people that you can trust. Um, Larry, Michael, Tim, Jonathan Goodman. Um, we, these are good people in the watch industry. Uh, and, and I honestly say that. Uh, th these are the people that you can trust, that you can share um, your your thoughts with about the industry, and and and, and I'm really glad. Um, uh, Larry is my friend, Michael is my friend, Tim is my friend. Uh, I'm just really proud. Uh, uh, well, listen, it goes both ways, Wing. I mean, you and I definitely connected immediately, yeah. and uh, we've you know we've spent time away from Shop NBC and yeah. in, in Las Vegas. We've lost money yeah. together. Me, I, I lost a little more than you did. But. Oh, 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 yes! You just remind me. I'm not. I'm not a gambler. I know. I I'm saw that. I'm not a gambler. I mean, I, th I, I feel um, our life is gambling every day. So, well, I was yeah. going to say, you say you're not a gambler, but you're a big gambler in business. It, it, that's that's the reason why I don't gamble, because <laughs> it's so much intensity, yeah. you know, in the business already. Um, cause it's constantly changing every day, but uh, that's why I don't. One, you know, I, you know what I mean. You don't want to play the table games no. because that's just throwing your money away. Yeah. But 
in any case, you know, we had Mike Davis in here last week, yep. and he was telling us about poker, and I've never really been, you know, into poker, but when, to hear Mike explain it, very Man, complicated. He knows the game. He does. He knows the game. And all of a sudden, I was getting drawn into it. We showed a clip of a $600,000 hand, and <sighs> Mike was explaining the, you know, all the little head games that were going on there. It got pretty interesting. Is that right? Yeah. But um, we, we've been spent time in Vegas together. We've spent time, of course, in, in Zurich, Switzerland together. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Now, we weren't in Hong Kong together, were we? Hong Kong, no. Not yet. I'm sure one day. Because I've been there and you've been there. Yep. I, I think no. I'm going to get into that first of all. Before we get into the whole Wing Liang, let me now repeat because it looks like we got a nice crowd on hand here about the free. And I know a lot of you guys are here. You want to. You all want to get a chance at the free watch. How, and do, how do you see how many people here? Uh, well, if you look on the bottom of the monitor right there. Oh it, wow! Okay, I just saw the amount of people here. Thank you. Wow! Well, thank yeah. you everybody for tuning in. Absolutely. Um, this watch here, this is the uh, espionage skeleton. Let's put Wing in the center of this watch here, uh, if we could, Ronnie. There we go. <laughs> Where should I look? Like here? or? Well, you can look at me. You can look at the okay. camera right All there, right. whatever. Uh, let's kind of move you a little bit okay. that way so that we get you. There we go. But anyway, Wing, tell us now about this prototype and tell us about the espionage. But don't go into your shop okay. NBC mode. Okay. Th this, is, right. this is me and you okay. at the barbecue place. All right, there you go. Having our, having our lunch. Well, well firstly, uh, here's the reason why I picked this watch, Larry. I'm listening. You notice it's orange. It's yeah. a sterling color. It's my respect to you. Well, you know that's my favorite color. Well, well there you go. And now, the espionage, I, I, I'm pretty sure you've seen this watch on Shop NBC. Uh, but this one is different. Um, the hands are done differently. Uh, the <coughs> dial where you can see the open heart complication, this is covered up. The production one, the production one is, um, is cut open. So this is highly collectible. I just want you to um, everybody to know. And also the next thing is, um, it was done in prototype only, never went in full production with the orange dial. So this is only one piece in the world. And I, I went back and forth, which one should I select? Because I know a lot of you are watch collectors turning, uh, tuning in tonight, and I wanna pick one watch that uh, is significant to not only me, Larry, but all of you that, yes, you wear this watch, you can, um, you know, you understand, we share the story together, and then we can talk about this, you know, not only today, but in the future as well. What's the case size on this? It looks pretty big. Yes, it's 50. Um, that's a 50? Uh, that's a 50. You didn't bring the watch. I didn't bring the watch because, uh, Larry, you didn't tell me. <laughs> I well, would have bring this watch and show everybody live. It, Wing. You know, yeah, that yeah. way we could have held it up to the camera and it yeah. would have been a real fuzzy shot anyway. No, it's on my desk. It's okay. on my desk. Uh, nobody's touching it. Well, now it's you have to new. ship it, not me. I was going to ship it. I will ship it. I will ship it. Well, you just saved me eight bucks. The, oh, it's more than that. <laughs> Trust me. Nowadays, UPS uh, okay. residential is probably somewhere between 15 to $20. All right. It's amazing. You're yeah. going to ship it UPS? I will. I guarantee before the holidays. I shipped Mike's, uh, the one Mike gave away last week, the Invicta. Yeah. I shipped it by the regular post office. By the way, the yep. guy who won that, he was in Akron, Ohio. I, I hope he received it by now. I, I didn't get it out till Monday, but uh, if you received it, you know, let us know. All right. Um, it, it's a beautiful watch wing, yep. a 50 millimeter. I didn't know that. Uh, a three-hand skeleton movement. Looks yep. like you have a tinted crystal in there, too. Yes, we call this uh, the translucent dial, and I love Tim came up with that um, description uh, many, many months ago when we had that uh, on, on Shop NBC. And ever since then, I've been using the, the, the terminology translucent dial. Okay. It's fantastic, yeah. Yeah. Now, again, to win the watch, you are going to have to send in an email to contact at acorn.tv, but not yet. We still haven't given out the secret word. We're going to give it out pretty soon, but just hang tight, okay? We'll give you the secret word, and you'll have to put the secret word in the subject line, and you're going to put your name and phone number in the body of the email. And remember something, do not send more than one email because the way our software works, if it gets two, if we get two emails from you, they're both going to get deleted. You will not be entered if you send more than one, believe me. So, and that happened last week because at one time we had like something like 56 emails in the, uh, in the inbox. And by the time when we went to do the drawing, it was down to 47. So we lost a few. So there were some people that must have sent some duplicates. So you don't want to do that or you won't be able to win. All right. So uh, remember, but you don't have the, you don't have the, the um, secret word yet. It will be coming up. All right, Wing. 
I was thinking to myself, you know, where do I want to start with you? And, you know, it's funny, we, we have become very good friends. Yes. You've helped me out even, you know, uh, in times when you didn't have to, you know, with, with our watches and things like this and, yep. and everything. But um, there's a lot I really don't know about you, man. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to and know? Because we're always talking about yep. other stuff, but yep. I'm curious, where did you grow up? I mean, yeah. you're obviously Chinese American yep. guy, but of course. were you born here? Were you born no. there? I mean, uh, what, what's Hong Kong, of course. I uh, moved here when I was uh, uh, 14 years old, 1984. So I uh, lived here for uh, 27 years. Loved this country. Great so, opportunities have given me. Um, you know, I'm dedicated to this country. So you, you were born in Hong Kong. Yep. Okay. Yep. And you went to, you know, basically grade high school. school. Uh, I went to high school here. Uh, went to college here. Yeah. All in Florida. All in Florida. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And so when you came here, did you know English? Of course not. I mean, of course, A, A to Z, you know, the alphabetical. So you didn't learn English in Hong Kong. You came here speaking Chinese and had to go to an American yes. high school. Yes. And I was four feet tall at that time. And, you know, you can imagine thin, short, and uh, being picked on. You know, most of the time it was it was a difficult time at the at that you know twenty some years ago. I didn't I didn't grow I didn't I, I was very short uh, until after high school. I I think I probably grew a lot after high school. Yeah. yeah, but how rough was that if you had to go into a high school and you didn't speak English? It was rough. Um, I mean, of, of course it's all forgotten. But at that moment, I remember uh, it was just me and my sister, uh, my second sister. We were living together, and she was making me. You know, taking care of me every day, you know. Yeah. Well, okay. So you guys moved from Hong Kong. Was yep. that your parents that made you move? They moved and so you, you followed or was it your mom, your dad? What was going on? They had a job here? What was happening? Yeah, they had a job here. Uh, um, and uh, my entire family moved here. Yeah, my mom, dad, my sister and I. Yeah. And they're all still with you and supporting you and everything? Of course, yeah. All right. So you're in high school. You're learning English. Yeah. I mean, think about that. It just hit me now. You had a tough time learning English, yep. and now, now you're on television communicating yep. in English. That in itself is amazing. We never really talked about that. It is hard. Um, English is still my second language, and uh, a lot of people think that I, you know, because, I mean, my wife and I uh, often discuss this, and she often said she thinks everybody thinks this is my first language. Um, but of course it is second language. I still have, um, tough time, you know, still learning every day and, um, one step at a time. Well, you have no problem communicating with your wife. I've been around you in your life <laughs> and it's pretty hysterical. I'm sure she's watching right now. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It is historical because yeah. she's British with yep. the, she's got that yep. British sense of humor, yep. <laughs> which is so dry. Yep. So sarcastic. Very, very sarcastic. And I got to tell you, Wing, a lot of it's rubbed off on you. Really? <laughs> people, yeah, because people don't see that on TV about yeah. you. They don't realize how sarcastic you yeah. really are. <laughs> well, I yeah. guess it is. Uh, on TV and, and, and here is, there's no rule here. I can say whatever you I want. You can say whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Within, within reason. Within reason. We, we yeah. don't want to go crazy. No, we, not at we, all. We want to keep it PG-13. That's right. Yeah. Yep. I, it was a PG show until Mike Davis came on, and then it got bumped to PG-13. But anyway, we're not going to go any, any yep. more beyond that. That's Acorn TV. But all right, so now you get out of high school. Did you go to college here too? Yes, absolutely. Uh, matter of fact, tonight uh, at Shop NBC in the green room, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, it's uh, N-U-X-E Cosmetic. Nux Cosmetic. Uh, I don't know. Um, the lady, she's actually from Hollywood, Florida. Uh, she's a French lady. And she went to the same school as I did. And, she, of course, she was studying the MBA program, you know, the next level up. But I was doing uh, regular, you know, uh, what's, what do you call it, the bachelor degree. And, and she and I. What, what college was that? FAU, Florida Atlantic University. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was telling her, you know, I graduated in 1992 and she graduated in 93. And then later on I found out she was an MBA program. And I was, I was uh, laughingly, I was telling you, I was just rush, rushing through college because I – um, started this business, you know, the Android, uh, the second year in college. And my family um, wanted me to get, the, 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 get a degree before I do the next project. So I was in and out of school very quickly, get my degree, pass all my courses, of course, and and uh, started Android in 1991. You know, that's how it began, everything. Now, you know? okay, you started Android in 1991. Now, you know, listen, I've been around the block a few times. I've yeah. had six businesses 
and now I've been working for for other people for the last thirteen right. years. So it's not such an easy thing. Not not easy at all. But um, the thing is, usually when someone is successful in business, uh, like yourself, there's usually somewhere along the way where somebody you know either mentored that person or gave them a break. Somebody believed in you, or somebody gave you a break. There's usually one person that you can look back on. That gave you that break that kind of kick-started everything and you turned on. Did you have such a thing like that in your life? No, not at all. Uh, I wish I did. I wish I had a mentor or I wish I had somebody that whenever I have doubt and I had questions or seeking for the next, you know, seeking for knowledge or anything, I wish I had that person. But all this, um, this last 20 years, I think... What made me well? First of all, I want to thank you, uh, calling a successful business person. I, I, seriously, I I don't I still don't, do not see that yet. Uh, but I thank you, everybody tonight, especially all the viewers tuning in, all the people at Shop NBC uh, viewers. You know, you know what I mean. Like, thank you, everybody. Uh, but I think what made me um, stay and continue is, I think it's because of my background, um, being new immigrant. Uh, it was funny tonight, uh, Tim and Tim, me and Ken, we went out to dinner mm-hmm. and we were just talking about it. And, and um, I think being a new immigrant, uh, came here 27 years ago, seeing my mom and my dad working $3.35 an hour, you know, a, a hard working life. I mean, it made me to stay and and continue and determine, never give up, just work hard and being honest, sincere, and, you know, like all these good things and, and, and stay and continue, like never give up. Okay, yeah. so you never give up. We, I, I think we get it. You're, you're right. driven. You never give driven, up. Yeah. You're absolutely that way. But I'm sorry, somewhere along the way, you had to get a break. And, and what I mean by that is this. First of all, watches right for second year of college you said you started a watch company right come on how did that happen uh i think it has to do with uh i have good sisters you know uh always supportive um but honestly uh one day you just decided i'm gonna start a watch company i think i share this with uh, a lot of you on air um at first it wasn't a watch just a watch company um and and when I was in university, uh, I knew I was gonna start my own business, and um, and and when I first began, it was I remember it was like three or four products. Uh, it was watches, uh, it was uh, uh, slippers, and I think it was also jewelry and uh, something like that. And then we went to a trade show and um, we displayed the products, you know, in the trade show. And of course, it was unsuccessful. But we saw people coming to our booth, and whether they buy, they bought or not, they were always looking at watches. So there was there must be something, you know, interesting, you know. And especially in that era, it was in the early 1990s. It was like the watch watches era, you know. Um, a lot of companies grew at that time. It was the quartz watches revolution, just like the internet and the cell phone era. You know, in you know, in the early two thousand and the internet era was like a PC. It was like in the nineteen ninety. It was like watches were the same thing. People were very interested, and it it began. And then um, uh, watches, and then we began to start importing. I share that with a lot of people on shopping PC, and um, you know, I saw there's something has to be corrected because I was importing, and I saw. You know, uh, I could do better. Um, I was I was not a designer. Uh, I was study uh, international business uh, degree, um, and and I was looking at the watches. I said I can improve that, and it was so competitive. If I was selling the same thing as other people, you know, we have to compete in prizes, and so I began uh, the first. Uh, uh, there was uh, okay. Here, here's the breaking point. Well, I appreciate you bringing this up. Uh, two, I had two breaking points. One was at a trade show at that time. Am I allowed to say the brand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Remember the Spice Girls in the mid-90s? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, they were wearing a brand of clothing, and that brand of clothing were selling really popular in department stores and chain stores. The owner of this company in Beverly Hills, um, California, 
she walked by. Mm -hmm. And she said, can you design me a line of watches? So I took the project. I flew over to LA, sat down. Now, who, so this that person? That person. That was the first breaking point. I told you, you get a break yes. somewhere. Yes, that was, a, that, was a, that was the first breaking point. And it was very successful, so it was the first time. And the second break point was, I, I, I can tell you this, um, Sharper Image. Sharper Image plays a huge order. Mm -hmm. I, I sent them the catalog, and the buyer call back and say, I want to order this, 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 this. It was a big, big, massive order. I was so shocked. I said, is that for real? You know, at that time I was young. It was in the 20s. And uh, we delivered. We I made, you know, decent uh, profit. And I reinvested that income into um, marketing. And that was my second second break point. And it took it, uh, you know, a step at a time. So, yeah. So, okay. So this buyer saw your, uh, this buyer saw your, your line and they gave you a big order. Yes. Okay. But was that because that buyer liked you? You met with that buyer? No, it was a design. Liked, it was a design. Designs? It was a design again. It was a design. Uh, so, um, and matter of fact, I flew to the headquarters. We were sitting in this uh, huge conference table. I mean, seriously, that conference table was like a TV conference table. It was so big. And she sat me down. She said, I'm going to make you a big watch company. So She said that to me. I was like, really? <laughs> you know? This buyer? This buyer. She said, I, I still remember store, her name. Store, okay. Shopper Image. Shannon King. That was her name. She was the vice president of Shopper Image. And that was the turning point? That was another turning point. Yes. That was not completely the turning point, because that that, if, if everybody remembers, uh, remember Shopper Image was went, going through a very uh, rough time at that time. Uh, buyers was coming in and out, you know, new buyers came in and they worked for like two to six months and fired. And that lady, um, she said, "I'm going to make you a very big watch company." And after a few months, she was gone, you know, and then a new buyer came in. And all right, yeah, Let, let's hold it right there. That this is good. So now I can see yeah. how things started. Yeah. You probably wanted to quit college at that point. No, no, I already finished. I graduated in 1992. Okay, yeah, I graduated in 1992. I started Android in 1991. So very interesting. Yeah. All right, yeah. hold it right there. We'll pick it up from there. I see we've got Mark on the phone from New York. He wants to talk to Wing. He says he wants to wish you a happy new year. So or holiday cheer. So let's see. Mark, are you there? Hey, Larry. Hey, Wayne. Mark from Zulu Time Zone. How are you guys doing tonight? Hi, Mark. Uh, can you repeat that, Mark? We couldn't hear you. Yes, yeah, Mark from Zulu Time Zone. In New hey, York. Mark. How are you? <laughs> hey, Very Mark. Very good. Really good. Uh, talking about breaks and everything, I just wanted to call in because it's because of you, Wing, that, uh, that I'm where I am today. Uh, my first big watch company I started with was Android, and I'm, I'm grateful for... Uh, how the site's going and how things are going and, and it's all because of you thank you thank you mark that's really nice mark uh i see you've come a long way with your website congratulations oh thanks very much uh i'm enjoying the show so you got a lot of people on in, in the uh in the chat room there very neat all right mark you got any uh, specific question for wing or anything like that no i just wanted to call and say hello and that was one of the breaks i had along the way and i i uh I was in a bad car accident several years ago. I sold cars for a living for a long time. And then after all my injuries, I was getting back on my feet and fell in love with watches. And uh, I called Wing one day, and and uh, we talked, and I became a dealer. No, I, I remember the story, and uh, you were, because you were immobile, if I remember correctly, you were watching uh, Shop NBC, and then you start buying watches and collecting watches. And matter yes. of fact, it, it's because of Larry. Um, well, I, I yeah, know you I mean, and I uh, corresponded on emails or phone calls, but actually Larry uh, 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 introduced you to me, and then I said, "Okay, well, the, Mark is a nice guy. Let's do it. You know, let's 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 give it a try." And Mark is very successful. But you know this too, Wing, and and Mark knows this for sure. I know Mark's living this, but you know uh, we get hit on at Sterling Original. And I'm, I'm sure it's the same for you, yep. especially when you go to shows like JCK or whatever, by literally you know hundreds of guys that have websites that want to sell your product yep, absolutely okay. everybody wants to sell but they all want to sell you know from pictures they yep. all want to sell yep. on the cuff they all want to have drop ship you know yep. and so we just flat out put out a thing that you know we 
boom, twenty five thousand yep. dollar minimum opening order, yep. Yep. and that just weeds everybody out, you know. So Mark is in a situation where he's trying to get product, which is not easy to do. Not a lot of uh, suppliers and vendors. As a matter of fact, you know, Mark wanted Sterling. I couldn't even arrange it for him. Yep. I, I even you know tried, but it, it just wouldn't fly with our company. But you reached out there and you gave him a chance, and I know that hundreds of guys want to sell your product. Well, uh, that's a uh, whatever. Um Mark, uh, I mean, uh, Larry just said it's very interesting um, because let me share this with Mark as well and all the viewers. Matter of fact, we're not opening new accounts. Uh, Absolutely. It doesn't do anybody any good we, to have 500 yeah. websites selling all the same Absolutely. product. We're, right now, you know, um, if you, if any, not you, Mark, of course, like if anybody um, uh, two years ago and uh, six, six months ago, our business model completely changed and we're not opening any new accounts at all uh, on the internet unless uh, uh, we're very selective right now uh, because again whatever you just said about um, yeah. everybody can have their watches the website and post the pictures and we just want to be making it more um, exclusive exclusive and the people that we trust are the only people that we want right. to do business with if they want to start with a $50,000 yeah. order yeah. you know and stock the merchandise yeah. You know, that's a serious player. You know, that's a different story. But you know, all these guys with websites, you know, they running out of the back of their car yep. or their trunk or their garage or even if it's a legitimate business, um, you know, it like I said, it doesn't do anybody any good to have, you know, hundreds of websites yep. all selling the same product. So you're right. Well, I, started, I started off with a decent size order for, uh, you know, for a small guy starting out. And, uh, you know, Larry helped me quite a bit. And, and Wayne gave me the chance. I, I placed the order and... Uh, and it started going right away. Now, last, last winter, I sold a ton of those tourbillons. My favorite watch, the Virtuoso Tourbillon. Uh, it's my favorite watch to this day. I sold, I don't know, Wayne could probably tell you, tons and tons of them. He, he, Not as many as uh, other people, but a, a very good amount. Mark really did. And um, we have a doctor friend in New York. And yes. you, you know who he is. And ha yes, actually, is. he didn't order directly from me. He ordered through... Mark and well, when he, he could, ordered Turbion, he didn't order just one. I, I, was it like four pieces at a time or six pieces at a time? Right. Oh yeah, he. Yeah. Uh, that was the doctor. Yes, he ordered six. Uh, Very interesting. The, yes, that was a great. He, he uh, could. Fact, uh, you guys didn't believe me when Candace didn't couldn't believe I had that order. I, I was kind of in shock myself. Yeah. It, it didn't sound uh, <laughs> and, you know, six Turbions in one shot. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. You sound like Woody Allen. You know, yeah. Woody <laughs> Allen says I wouldn't want to belong to any <laughs> yeah. club that would have me for a member. Mark is saying, I can't believe he wants to buy these watches yeah. from me, you know. And and the the doctor yeah. knows me directly. Okay. Because of Mark's service, he ordered through Mark. And if I know Mark, he probably drove over there and delivered him by That's hand. right. Just about. And then <laughs> and then also he ordered was that six volcano automatic as well? Yes, the yeah. the orange ones that he put the picture that they put on Facebook with all the, the doctor's hands hold uh the four or there five hands all together in the operating room. That was great. I got to share this with you. Uh, I know a lot of viewers are, I'm not exaggerating. Um, they were also hanging out at my, that group of doctors uh, in New York City, they were hanging out at my booth in Basel. Uh, and they are one of those exclusive, um, I, I can say this on, on, on Larry's Accorn TV. One of them, Pactet Philippe, pay for first class all the way to Switzerland. Wow. And, 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 and to visit the factory, uh, like all first class, everything. And he owns, I think, I forgot how much it was. It's one of those seven digits or uh, uh, tourbillon. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not. He, seven digits is a million. Half a million or to a million dollars tourbillon. Okay. Just, just uh, want to make sure we're I mean, talking on the same I mean, page here. A million and, dollars. And right. then they, seriously, they were my virtual so tourbillon. And they were so proud. They went to the Breitling party. And he was telling the Breitling president, look at this Android Johnston Turbion. And he, he came, and then we went on to dinner the next day, of course, and then we were just, and he you was know, telling me and, and all the story. It was very interesting. I'm not allowed to say this on Shop ABC, of course. But. Well, you know, let me tell you this. Uh, we're, hey, Mark, let me thank you for the yeah. call. Let's make room for another caller to yeah. get in the queue. Uh, so, Mark, okay, thank guys. you very much for contributing to the show, participating. Much love to you out there. Say hi to everybody in New York and New Rochelle, okay? Will do. Thanks for having me. You guys thank have you, a good Mark. Holiday. All right, Mark. Uh, All right, Zulu, ZuluTime.com, right? ZuluTimeZone.com. ZuluTimeZone.com. Zulu Zulu All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank All you, right. Mark. Peace, Mark. Right. You know, we're talking about ceramic tourbillons. And, um, you know, sometimes uh, 
I think sometimes people think that, you know, we can just crank these things out. They we just poop, yeah. poop them out. They come out like, you know, just like that. And uh, I mean, take a look at A.L. this year. You know, right. he, at the, I think it was around December of last year, maybe even in January. It was right around the turn of the year when they all said, OK, I'm going to tell you a secret. We're coming out with a tourbillon. Right. And that for all year long, I think he's at four tourbillons, as a matter of fact. And I think all year long, people are saying, where's the Invicta tourbillon? Where's the now? Nobody can get it out quicker than they all. They all can pull miracles. You know, we've all seen that. But even they all, it took almost a year. Absolutely. For him to come out with that Absolutely. tourbillon. And the point I'm getting at here is I remember, I can't remember exactly where we were or when it was, but you and I were talking and it's funny, I, like it was, I think maybe in the same conversation or maybe in a second conversation shortly after the first, you said, we're having, you're making a ceramic tourbillon. And I said, that's funny. So are we, <laughs> you know, we had never even done, I said, meaning Sterling original, we had never even done a ceramic watch period. Okay. But you know, Chaim wanted to make it special. Right. So he says, okay, our first ceramic is going to be a tourbillon. And yours has been out now for what, six months? Well, uh, your first ceramic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I saw it in Basel. Basel. So was Basel it? was April, so May, June, July, August. The end of March. That September, was... October, November, December. Yeah, you're right. Eight months ago. Yeah. Eight months. But even at Basel, you, that was just a sample. That wasn't That even, was a uh, prototype. Yeah. It so was it, already in production, but yeah. you, we had the first showing, of course, yeah. Yes, but it really didn't come out till no. about June, right? Uh, I don't remember, but sometimes July, August. Okay, yeah. so I remember we were talking... Yeah. And I, you see, and I said, well, we're doing one too. And, and, you know, being the gentleman that you are, it's like, oh, I don't care. You know, some guys get, some guys get all crazy. Like, yeah. well, I, you know, by the way, uh, Stan just hit, hit me on the hip to earlier tonight. He says, right. tell Wing I said hello. And okay, well, congratulations. If Stan is uh, watching, hello, Stan. Yeah. He, one of our favorite guy. He just had a baby. Oh, good. Very so, good. Congratulations. Well, his wife had the baby. Well, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway. So, it would be a miracle if Stan has So you, you told me, you said, okay, we're do, you're doing a ceramic yeah. tourbillon. I said, well, you know, that's funny. So are we, because I had learned about it. Well, since then, we have come out with another ceramic watch, but we are just now getting to the point where yeah. the first samples came in. I saw it on uh, Facebook. It's beautiful, Larry. Uh, okay. I'm so proud of yeah. you. Yeah. You know, I might even have a picture of it. Yeah. Um, Ronnie, let's let's try and see if we can pull up a picture, okay? I want to show Wing um, and everybody else, but it's not here yet. Um, go into, um, let me see here, Ronnie. Hold on. Bear with me, guys. Uh, it's in the, um, go to Acorn TV and then go to, uh, is that the picture folder? Yep. Um, go up one, up one. Yep. Go into Sterling. That's it. Yeah. Check Check this out, Wing. Let me see. That's hot. Yeah, and again, the resolution uh, may be a little bit too high res for the stream. That's a high resolution photo. So, uh, you know, the streaming, the the bit stream that we're doing here on Acorn TV with Chillin' is not as high enough. We'd have to lower the res on the picture. So you might see a little bit of pixelation. But that's our new black ceramic. That's hot. Tool, it, which is much different than your yes. virtuoso. Yes. But anyway, and, thank you, and I can see And I can see the carbon fiber uh, dial, which is very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and I love how the two hands clean, you know, yeah. that but interpretation. My, but, but my point is, when we were talking about that, that was way before Basel, yeah. when, but when you're doing yeah. it. I mean, people don't understand. It takes a long time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I know we often, you know, you and I, Tim, uh, mm -hmm. all of us, uh, we often get on air and say how difficult it is to get the movements. And it is true. I, yes, of course, you know, we see every vendor, they come in and bring a turbine movement. But behind the scene, it's... Is is begging like please you know like I want to the Etta you know the Swiss mechanical is yeah. so difficult to get the Turbion is so difficult. I wouldn't to get. know about that because no, we're not. But yeah. we have some Swiss no, made goods to, coming. Your, your but, company has the ability, but you know you're yeah. just taking different strategy. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have some Swiss made goods coming, but uh, I don't think any at a twenty twenty four. Listen, um, I want to. I think it's time. We have a lot of people out there. Everybody wants to know. They want to get their entries in. So why don't we do that? Let's go to the graphic. Okay. And um, let's actually put Wing in there, okay? And I'll do the talking because they don't want to see me. They want to see Wing. That's why they're all here tonight, no. okay? Now, here we're going to give you the secret word, so get ready with your email accounts and all that. But you, there's no rush because it's, it's not like first come, first serve or anything like that. It's going to be very random. You'll see how we do it. It's very transparent. But here's the thing. You're going to send an email to contact at acorn.tv. 
That's where you send it. You can only send one. If you send more than one, it gets deleted. In the body of the email, you must put your full name, and, you know, name and phone number. Okay? Name and phone number. All right? And now in the subject line, we're going to give you the secret word. Go ahead. Here it is. For tonight, it is... Wayne, can you read that? <laughs> bogey. <laughs> That's it. It's bogey. You don't know who bogey is, yeah, do you? Well, I know what it is. No, but you know who bogey is? No, I don't. I thought I was interpreting something else. We're not smoking weed here, okay? okay? <laughs> I mean, come on. Maybe now. I did it before I came <laughs> over. That's why I was late. <laughs> no, 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 dog. No. All right. No, bogey is for Humphrey Bogart, okay. and uh, they called him bogey. And uh, in our classic film zone tonight, I know you're not much for that no, stuff, I'm not. but you know, I'm going to show a few clips. We're not going to spend too much time. We're going to show a little bit of Casablanca. And uh, of course, Humphrey Bogart was nominated for an Academy Award for Casablanca. And um, he did not win. But anyway, he's a great actor. Everybody knows Bogey. So that's it. In the subject line, you must put the word Bogey, B-O-G-I-E. Go ahead. Start your emails coming if you want to be in the drawing. So, let me ask you this. Even up to now, I still don't know how to play this game. So somebody sends you an email with a subject line, the Bogey word. And, and then they have to put their name. Right. And, and phone number. Is that in, first come, first serve? Or no. It, no. What's going to happen? Let's, let's come back to me, Ronnie. What's going to happen here? Let's let's take it off there now. Okay, here's what's going to happen, guys. You're going to send an email to contact at acorn.tv. In the subject line, you put bogey. On the body of the email, you put your name and phone number. Right now, we have a special mailbox set up for that that's completely empty, okay? Later on in the show, okay, we are then going to select one person. It's going to be very transparent the way we do it, Okay. Somebody's going to call in and we're going to say, give me a number between one and, you know, if we have 27 emails, we'll say, give me a number between one and 27 or between one and 127. However many emails are in the box after it's cleaned out of duplicates, someone's going to select a number and we're going to pop it up there on the screen wing. You didn't watch the show last week. Right. And people at home are going to see and we're going to have Ginger out there in the phone room. She's going to count down and you're going to see you'll see her click one by one. And when she gets to the right one, number, you know, whatever the number right. is, we're going to open it up, and that's going to be the winner. I want to say... Uh, it's very, very fair and very random. Right. So right before um, the show, I received... Uh, thank you, for everybody, for uh, sending me private message or emails asking me how to play this game. I truly don't know. Like, uh, And then I want to wish uh, Kevin um, from California. He had his eye surgery and uh, get well soon. And then Tim... Um, uh, same thing, not Tim Temple, but of course, uh, one of our watch geeks. Um, uh, I can see this. There's he, so, there's yeah. somebody on the phone, Tim from Pennsylvania. Yeah, is that I, him? Tim loves watches, if I remember his uh, geeks. Let's, uh, let's get him name. on the phone. Let's get, okay, you want to finish your thought? Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was going to say because I saw this and uh, meant, you know, he purchased the Mentis and thank you. Tim, are you there? Yeah, I can't wait to talk to you. I sure am. Are All you right. Tim loves I, watches? Yes, that is me. All I, right. I can't believe okay. I'm, I'm speaking with two of the most gentlemanly guys in the watch business well thank you tim uh, you have something specifically for wing or what or me or what well well uh first with with wing i sized the mantis last night okay what a magnificent watch i got so many compliments on it today and what i couldn't believe was when i looked at it first thing this morning i mean the bedroom is still dark the hands were still glowing after, I don't know, eight or nine hours. Fantastic. Wow. I was really surprised by that. What watch is that, Tim? Uh, the Mentis. Uh, it's a... Uh, you got some funky names on your watch. Yes. <laughs> Matter of fact, Mentis started <laughs> so many, many years ago. And thank you for saying that. It's because of the Superluminova material. Uh, very expensive, but it's very um, uh, last long, like long-lasting, I should call it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that a big watch, too? No, um, it's a 40, uh, 44. 44? 40? Yeah, yeah, quartz. 40, 44. 44 quartz. Uh, um, uh, it's a classic with the Android touch design. You know, the yellow hand Let's, with can the we yellow get a gasket. Pic- we can't get a picture of it, can we? Oh, do- we can't go to a website, can we, yeah. Ronnie? No. If Ginger could open up a browser out there. Oh, are you going to try it, Ronnie? Go to shopnbc.com. I didn't know you could open another browser. You're going to try it. Okay, we're going to try and get a picture for you guys. Hang on. 
Uh, let's see here. Go to watches. watches. Android. There you go. Okay. And let's see if we can find it. Um, open 96 items on the <sighs> items per page. 96. Yep. Then We're going to try and find that watch for you, Tim. What is it now? It's the Mantis? The Mantis. Yes, it is. All right. We're going to see if we can show everybody what we're talking about. All right. Well, we're trying to get that picture for you. You know, um, did, did you have anything else uh, that you wanted to go into tonight, or is that it? Well, I wanted to say that I showed the watch to one of the guys I work with is a, a watch person, watches shop all the time. And I stopped him today. I was like, hey, Keith, check out this, this new Android I got. And he looked at it. He's like, that's an Android? I said, yeah. He says, I've never seen one like that. That's really nice. So there you, go. you may have yet another Android convert coming Which your one, way. Uh, the, both are Mantis. One is the chronograph version. Which one does, this, does Tim have? Tim has the, right, the one on the right. This okay. one, right? Yeah, he's gonna. Well, he can't see that yet. He's gonna okay. save the picture. It's the three handle. Uh, That's three, right. Three hand. Did you get the uh, uh, the black version or did you get the um, the yellow stainless steel? Sterling silver, sterling silver uh, with uh, the black dial. That's right. Yep. That's All right. The one here, we're gonna open up. Here it is, right here. We pro probably. I don't know if we got the right color. It doesn't really matter. It is. It, that's the one. Yep. There you go. There it is, guys. So is that your watch, Tim? Uh, yep, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, you see the technology at work here. It is amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie went to the shop site and just lifted that picture right off their website. Nicely done. Hopefully <laughs> they won't find out about it. Yep. All right, Tim. And Larry, I just want to say thank, thank you for making such great watches, thank too. You. Okay, thank you, Tim. Do you own right, any gentlemen. do you own any Sterlings? Oh yes. Okay, yes, give I, me. I have uh, about what? three or four of them. What's your favorite one? The oh, I, I can't think of the name of it. Um, it's big, fifty millimeter. That could be a lot of watches. All right, well, listen, Tim. Uh, thank you so much nautical, for your support. Nautical name, I know that, but a nautical anyway, name. It, nah. In fact, I even bought an orange one. I spoke with you a long time back when you were still having arm problems, and I said, you know, I hope that uh, some of them end up out in in shop when you go out there the next time. Some of the orange ones. Yeah, yeah. My arm, my arm is actually throbbing at this second because Jonathan came over here tonight, and he's kind of a like a physical fitness nut, and uh, you know, I'm as big as a house these days, and so, no, it's true. It's like I'm like ridiculous i'm just a big cow right now <laughs> so anyway so jonathan says man he says you got to do some push-ups he says get down on the floor can you do a yeah. push-up so i said yeah so he challenged I, me i can do half no I, I i thought i said let's see if i could do two and i mean i got up to 11 12 and i'm not gonna you know he's challenging me this is before the show tonight you yeah. know if you would have been here on time you would have seen it out there you know in the green room so i'm doing these push-ups and it, my weight you know it's putting a lot of stress on my elbow and i thought you know i forgot about my elbow and i thought like i'm healed and everything and when i got to about number seven i could start feeling it where i broke the arm you know even though it's supposed to be healed by now and it is healed but i'm feeling i'm not stopping i'm going i'm pumping eight nine ten i got eleven twelve and i stopped at twelve and i, I probably could have got another two or three i said listen i said you know what my arm's starting to hurt i gotta stop jonathan but i mean you know he's trying to whip me into shape in two minutes there but yeah. anyway but thank you for remembering about my arm, Tim. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to move on. I guess we got, you're telling me we got other people that want to call in or get in. By the way, we can do video Skype. If you look on the screen at the top right there, you Skype Acorn TV, and then we'll add you to the list, and then you can come in. We can do a split screen with Wing if you want to do that. Um, I think this might be a good time to just do a quick repeat. Anybody that just came in the show on the contest here, just I'm not going to go into every little detail but here's the thing you want to get in the drawing for the prototype orange espionage skeleton from wing it's a prototype this is what he you know he treasures these this is a real collector's piece for android fans you're going to send an email to contact at acorn.tv and in the subject line you put the secret word bogey and in the body of the email you're going to put uh you're going to put your name and phone number Mail those in a little bit later. We're going we're gonna to determine a winner a little bit later. 
All right. Before we go to the phone line, uh, Wing, I want to go back now. You, you'd you left us off where you right. got an order from Sharper Image when in 1992, if I remember. Yes. And uh, that, uh, 1996, 1997. Oh, 96, 97. Sharper Image. And that's what kind of kick-started your business. Yes. It was a, an order where, um, you know, it uh, it was like, what, 1,000 pieces? No. No. No, 200. No, 200 pieces? Yeah. No, 10,000. 10,000 pieces? I, I want to use that F adjective, but I was so shocked. 10,000 pieces? 10,000 pieces. Shop NBC doesn't order 10,000 pieces. One order, 10,000 units. Of one model? No, not one model. But a line a, a line of uh, that I designed. Very... Uh, uh, I wow. remember, uh, I was shocked, and you know what? They also pay me LC, which is equivalent to cash. You know, letter when of credit, we, yeah, letter of credit. So we deliver and we collected the money. At that age, I was like, "Wow," you know. But knowing me, never didn't spend a dime. You know, um, mm-hmm. uh, the the money was uh, um, uh, save and use it on uh, to fuel Android even. You know, to the next step. You know, I invested in marketing, in uh, built a really nice uh, image. Uh, so that was the next break, breaking point. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, is, I hear a lot of noise out there in the uh, out there in the green room. Uh, is that the uh, is that the Skype or is that the TV? It's just noise. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to worry about at this point. It's Skype. Okay. Us, Can we turn the volume on that down? I mean that's a little ridiculous. Just want to say, uh, Tim Tempo is in the house. I, and, I just uh, saw yeah. Tim, and I, you know it's funny. I, our, our good friend. Everything Tim everything was quiet. And all of a sudden, I heard a bunch of noise out there, and I look out there, and I saw Tim through the through the doorway out there. So all of a sudden, everything was fine. Now all of a sudden, Tim's here. We got a bunch of noise going on yep. out there. It's like he brought a party up in here. <laughs> hey Tim, how you doing? What up? Here, come on, <laughs> stick your face in here, Tim. You had your show, but we're going to do another show. <laughs> we're going to do another yeah. show with Tim. In January about photography. Did he tell you about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do a show. So, Tim, you got to j- kind of duck down and get in here. You know, w- maybe the next uh, maybe, the, <laughs> maybe the next time what we'll do is I, I've got a third microphone, but we're not wired tonight. But <laughs> yep. we'll get a, a handheld mic okay, and we'll, we'll, stand here. Yeah, and we'll do we'll do a three way yeah, show. Okay. okay. But thanks for stopping by. Oh, yeah. No, we're going to hang out. Look, we got a green room here is yeah. way better. Than <laughs> well, did you see I, I got that spread for you? It's an excellent spread. Yeah. Did you uh, see what I brought? I did. Okay. Actually. That's for you, Tim. That's palatial. I appreciate. Yeah. That. Okay. So go ahead. Sure have it. Have it. Because I'm. I'm on a. Jonathan put me on a diet. Oh. Okay. He had me doing push-ups. He's a stern taskmaster. I'm man. telling you, man. That kid is something. So uh, you know, I'm not eating any of that stuff. That's all for you, yeah. Tim. Have a party. All right. So anyway, you got this ten thousand piece order from uh, Sharper, Sharper Image, Image in nineteen ninety six. You're just starting 1996, your nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety seven, and you're just starting your business out. That was a major break. Nineteen ninety one, I started the business. Yeah, but the business when you started it was you're saying you were importing goods. Importing at first. Okay, yeah. you didn't start designing your own till this one person came and said, "I like your styles. Design some styles uh, for me." And uh, who was that person? Uh, Can- that was uh, if her name is Michelle, and her husband is Orly. I see them once in a while. They had a, they had their own shop on Beverly Hills, and they were also um, distributing their clothing uh, to Bloomingdale's and a lot of department stores at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. All right. So that was a break that they wanted. To that design was a break. A line. Then, then I designed image. for them, and then I designed another line. So that got you into designing. Uh, way before that, but I was doing designing. But that those were the two breaking points in my um, early business All right. career. All right. Now, let me ask you this. So when you got into not just importing, but designing your own, did that take you back to Hong Kong? You mean like? Well, in other words, you moved here from Hong Kong, you said, when you were 14 years right, old. Right, right. Okay. Right. You grew up in Hong Kong. Right. You went to school in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. Until okay. I was 14. I Obviously, you have family back there. Yes. Okay. So now you go into the watch business, and now you start doing your own designs. Right. So were you going back there to... Because that was... Yes. Be, that, I, well, yeah, that was I get before, it now. That was before China overtook Hong Kong in 1998. G- 1997, correct. Um, uh, let me share this with everybody. Um, in the late 80s and the early 1990s, uh, the watch industry in Hong Kong was... Um, they couldn't produce enough watches. It was huge. To, it was huge. It, a, a lot of people were making money, and and um, at that time, uh, it was very difficult um, to get 
partnership with any factory it's because they're full of orders. They don't care. You know, who are you? You know, basically. And at that time, I was um, uh, in my twenties, early twenties, and and uh, and I went back. Uh, I think it's I often call it fate, and I met this factory. Still today, they're producing uh, um, your goods. My, our goods. We're like family, brothers, whatever. Um, and the 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 factory. I proposed to them, and they took my idea. They accepted it, and they produced case and bracelet only. They were not a uh, 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 like a full final watch product. They they're um, even today they're producing some of the biggest name in the world. Um, they produce a uh, you know a lot of high end brands that you pay by the thousands or and 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 the case and the bracelet comes come from them actually. And but we. Are the only brand that they produce in the whole, you know, the whole whole watch, assemble it wow. together. So, so, so still had, today they're still producing for right. us. So you've had that relationship now for about fourteen, fifteen years. Uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years. Yeah. Yeah, and 18, I know, yeah. and I know how great that is. Yeah, and what a comfort level that yeah. is, and that really, to me, and, and you know more about this than I yeah. do, but I would say from my experience, you know, to me that's one of the keys yeah. of being successful manufacturing, you know, non-Swiss made goods, if you're going to bring in goods from the Far East, is to have that close relationship with your factory yep. where they're doing your goods. Like in the case of Von Berg, he's not making anybody else. Now, he has other businesses, but I'm saying as far as the factory where he's producing our goods, no other goods are coming out except Sterling Original. It's a full-time thing yep. coming out. As opposed to guys, and, and we're not going to name any names in this regard. I don't want. I want to get away from that. But there are guys that that make lots of watches, and they come from the Far East, but they're using you know yeah, I five factories, ten yeah, factories, yeah, twenty yeah. factories. You got this one over here, and they're a lot of off the rack. Our guy is doing everything from scratch. Yep. He's doing all the engineering. I know you're doing all the yep. engineering, everything. And you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship yep. where everything is accountable. If it's no good, I send it back yep. to you. They've got to answer for everything. They've got. Yep. It, that's one of the keys. And yeah, it, it is having that relationship. Um, you know, whenever uh, my in, in the watch industry, you really need uh, a factory um, to be your, you know, partner or back you up um, absolutely uh you, you really need that. and also the case uh movement the bracelet there are the i mean every single component is a key component but having your own factory produce your case and bracelet is it, it helps you to take to another level and i also in the uh early 2000 late 1990s i set up my own uh, i partnered with another uh um, you know, per factory. person factory that only the whole factory uh, only assembles for Android. We don't assemble any watches uh, at all. This person I met in 1993, 1994. At that time, he was producing one of the biggest brand of watches in on in on earth. I should call it. I think they were doing sixty or seventy million dollars in the early 1990s, and this this person was partnered with this brand. So I met this person in the early 1993-4, but we didn't um, partner up until late 90s. And, he, and I proposed to him, and that is my own assembling line. So uh, I have two, it, to, even today, I have two factories. One is only assembling, and the other factory is case, bracelet, and only assemble for us. And the case and bracelet not only produce for me, if I remember correctly, the numbers, I think they either produce 600,000 or 800,000 case and bracelet per year. That's how massive they are. And um, uh, over 300 employees, two, bu two, two buildings, yeah. um, that, and, and, a, and, and a lot of uh, uh, case and bracelet that you buy, mm -hmm. you know, wherever, by the thousand dollars, they also produce. They only produce in case and bracelet. I, I I I hope I explained that very clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Wing, I'm going to give you just a well before I give you a little break here. Um, I see we've got someone on the line. It's yeah. another Mark from New York. It's not the same Mark. One call per show. Mark, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Good, Mark. You're on with uh, Wing and Larry. What do you got? Hi, Larry, and thank you for having me on your show last week. Oh, it's Mark uh, from the 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 treasure hunter from the Caribbean. Right. Uh, Wing. Uh, no Skype call this week, Mark. 
Uh, well, I have two questions uh, actually for Wing, Larry. I know, that's fine. You can talk to Wing, but where's the Skype video? I loved your Skype video. It's on. Where is it at? Where is it at? I, I see a woman in the background there talking to Tim. Oh, okay. Well, then the camera, you, you, we got to fix that, Ronnie. All right, well, we're not getting your Skype video for whatever reason. Ronnie, can you take a look at that? We want to get you on a split screen. If you're on a video, that's Ginger. You're seeing Ginger. Hi, Ginger. Can other people see Mark? If, let's say... If, uh, not yet. No, like, not when yet. When it's working, everybody can see Mark as well. Is that... What's Tim laughing? <laughs> I don't know. Because, you know, I... Anyway, listen. Ginger's it doing a great job out there tonight. We, hold on, Mark. We're going to get you up on the screen here. Hold on. Tim is laughing out there. We'll get it straight. We can't get okay. it. Is there a different way to answer? I mean, you just click on... All right, we're not going to get your video tonight, Mark. Sorry about that. But okay, we got your audio here. So what do you want to go with Wing? Go ahead. Wing, uh, two questions. Uh, yes, I sir. I purchased a couple of months ago uh, the original Volcano with the uh, blue strap. Okay, the rubber strap version, the automatic. Right, not okay. the chronograph. The, uh, the chronograph, red. yes, with the leather strap, uh, blue and stitches. I noticed that you came out with the chronograph recently uh, with a leather strap. Uh, will that leather strap... Uh, I know it's 50 millimeters and everything, but I don't know the actual bandwidth size. I would actually like to have an option of putting that strap from the chronograph. Do you sell that separately? Yes, we do. Uh, it's 24 millimeter. So let me clarify this. So you bought the Volcano chronograph. Is that correct? No, not the not the chronograph. Just the regular uh, rubber, blue rubber Automatic. strap. Automatic. With the... Uh, I wish you could see it. Right, the it's... automatic version, right? With the blue rubber strap, right? Yes. yes. Can you see it? Yes, I, I know which one you're talking about exactly. Yes, they're all um, they're interchangeable, 24 millimeters, and yes, we do sell it separately. Okay, so I can just contact your office? I have your number. Yes, contact uh, my office, call Uli or Candace, they will set you up. And you can't see what I'm showing right no, now? No, we can't see it, Mark. Okay, because I have a, the, another watch, I don't have my glasses that I bought from you close. Oh, by the way, Wing, you're the culprit, by the way. My wife fell in love with your line several years ago, <clears throat> and like 240 watches later across the board there, uh, she just loved your uh, your ability and your creative designing. Thank you. Uh, but I, I forget the name of it here. Maybe if I look at the back here. Uh, I never even took it out of the wrapper. It's the one with the helium that. valve release or whatever the re I have my model numbers on the back of the watch. It begins with A for Apple, D for David, and then uh, the digits behind. Yeah, hold on. Because what I was going to ask, I just wanted to understand how the valve works. I guess it's a pressure valve on these things. Okay, all right. Okay, now, must be the espionage automatic. Is that the 50 millimeter? Oh, hold on a second. I'm put my glasses on. That's what happens when you... It's AD519. Um... Yep, that's it. Yep. How does it work? Okay, um, it's very interesting. Unlike, uh, uh, I explained that on air uh, at Shop MEC. You know, usually the helium valve, you have to unscrew the crown or uh, and to let the helium comes out. Uh, I was thinking reversely because what if you forget to lock the crown uh, 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 after you release the helium? The one that I designed is, is actually is a valve that you use uh, uh, a tool from our toolkit or whatever, like a, a, a one millimeter uh, thick uh, pin that you go through the, um, uh, the protective uh, cap and you push on it and then it releases uh, the pressure inside the watch. So if you're forgotten about it, you can still go swimming, diving with that watch, and the water will still not come uh, get inside to the watch. So I, I, I designed this reversely, versus you have to unscrew it. Mine is just like you you push the the valve, the air the helium comes out, and and then it closes up automatically. Even if you forget, the watch will still prevent water from getting inside to the watch case. Great. And then what happens afterwards as far as the helium coming out? I mean, does it have to be reset or? No, nothing. There is nothing needs to be done. Um, once you push it, release the air, the helium, and you can just start wearing the watch again. Um, now, let me. Uh, I, I think I explained once or twice on air. Um, what is that all about? 
uh, about Healing Watch. Uh, it was very interesting to me as well. You know, under the normal circumstance, when you uh, you know you dive in your uh, uh, your uh, half feet half foot uh, bathtub, or you swim in your six feet swimming pool, there is no need to release any uh, uh, pressure from your watch at all. Uh, the Healing Valve is designed for deep sea divers. You know, one of those explorer, they wear the metal suits, go under 3,000 feet under the water, you know, to explore, you know, the oil or whatever. And when they come back up, um, they have to go through this cham chamber and they have to sit in the chamber and they have to breathe in all this different uh, mixture of ca air, you know, like the helium mixed with air. And they have to sit there for hours and, and depressure themselves, if I ex am explaining correctly. Now, during this process, you know, the, the air is mixed with um, helium, helium. And helium the, the, is so small that it will sip through, you know, your watch, your gasket, and everything. So uh, they come back up 1,000 feet. The next time they, uh, the next level is another 1,000 feet in the chamber. They'll, they'll, they'll go through this process, right? So when they are on the surface, you know, the, 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 the land level, the sea level, you know, um, there's helium built up inside your watch, okay? And what happens if you don't release the, the, the valve? Um, the helium would expand, and then your watch will pop. You know, the crystal will just, like, open up. That's why you un unscrew the, the cap and let the helium come out and then close it. That's, that's the whole, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the, the thinking behind it. Well, I think... I think it's phenomenal, and uh, <clears throat> no, as Larry knows, I'm involved uh, with a lot of divers in my company, and they saw me wearing the watch, and um, I felt a little ashamed that I couldn't exactly explain how, right. how the watch now you do. worked. So you're, uh, taking, you're taking an Android watch down there, you're having your guys wear an Android watch when they go deep sea, uh, when they go diving for that Carib those uh, sunken treasures in the Caribbean? I actually gave them it, and they and they actually were doing some diving with it. And so, they're very funny. Uh, they do they have a wing? Do you make that same? I have it in gray, and I don't remember when I purchased it. If it came with a black option? No, no? it's at this time uh, only the gray strap. We're coming out with the next version of the espionage, uh, the diver with the. Uh, the healing valve or the pressure release valve, I call it, because it's uh, engineered differently. Uh, it's going to come out next year. Um, so uh, it's going to come out with the sinister, Michael Davis called it the sinister look, uh, mm -hmm. all black, black strap, black case, and also comes out with the, uh, the stainless steel version with the gray right. strap as well. Yeah, Mark, I want to thank you for participating again. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity, and Wing, thank you. You're phenomenal larry you know the one you feel about you too Tremendous thank you success. i'm sorry we couldn't get the uh, skype video working tonight maybe we can get it working after this call but thank uh th thanks again mark okay all right peace peace all right so um there you have one of your customers this, i know this guy he's in new york we never did get together to meet but we've talked right. on the phone a few times he does uh he's his company spends millions of dollars he has multiple tourbillons oh from, wow from different companies i'm sure he has yours too he had mine and mike's you know ours last last week he showed right. it but um they spend millions of dollars and he's got teams of divers they they're diving for buried treasure is that right in, wow. the, in the caribbean well, he's constantly flying back and forth from new york to the caribbean. that's good so he got the um our dive master watches and and it will work. It was definitely um, the way we built the 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 side wall is to withstand all the water pressure. Mm -hmm. So there you go, one thousand six hundred fifty feet. All right, now Wing, I want to give you a chance yes. to have some little drink, a little refreshment. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, Thank I'm you. gonna I'm gonna go a quick uh, a quick uh, hit on the classic film zone. Let's go to it, Ronnie. We're gonna go to the classic film zone. Tonight we're going to feature, um, and we're going to make this quick, the classic film zone. This isn't one of those long 30-minute classic film zones or anything like that where I've shown five and six clips and taken 45 minutes. This is going to be a quickie. Just got It's hard to really make Casablanca a quickie. Um, one of the all-time classic movies, um, 
I've got a few uh, statistics here. AFI, the American Film Institute's 100 Years, 100 Movies, ranks number two of all time. Stop and think about that. You know millions of movies. And, of course, AFI is as prestigious as it gets, the American Film Institute, number two all time. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, as far as the, you know, they call their passion movies, movies of, you know, love stories and passion of love stories, they call them their passion uh, Casablanca ranks number one, <laughs> the number one passion movie of all time. Uh, AFI's uh, top 100. It's amazing. It ranks number one with uh, Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey Bogart. Um, and it really is an amazing story. It's about um, uh, during the um, the time when Nazi Germany was, you know, invading other countries, and particularly in this case, uh, right after the French invasion. You know the the German invasion of France, where they overtook France. Uh, this was a love story, basically, of um, Rick Blaine, who is Humphrey Bogart, and uh, Ilsa, who is played by Ingrid Bergman. When they met in Paris, France, you know Rick had a, a saloon, and he's an American. And um, at that time, Ilsa was married, but Rick never knew it, and she never bothered to tell him because her husband at least what she thought and what everybody thought. Her husband was Victor Laszlo, played by Paul Henreid, and uh, he was actually killed in a concentration camp, or so they thought. He actually escaped, but the word was out that he uh, was killed because he was a well-known um, fighter of the Nazis, and he was part of the French resistance to the Nazi invasion. And so, you know, all the resistance forces, you know, he was a leader. And so the word was out that he was killed. And so she was kind of uh, somewhat devastated that her husband had been killed by the Nazis in a concentration ca camp. Okay. And um, in any case, um, they had this tremendous love story. And then, of course, the Germans invaded Paris and everybody had to flee. Okay. And um, so when they had to flee, Rick and Ilsa were going to get out of Paris and she said, I'll meet you at the train station. And when she went back to her hotel, she got the message and found out that her husband was actually still alive. So she never met him at the station. He, went, he got on the train. He was devastated. And um, he went to Morocco and Casablanca. And he opened up a cafe, Cafe American, and a uh, very famous place. And all these you know, French refugees from, from France you know, and Paris were going to all over, but in particular Casablanca, and you had all these different, you know, Africans there and, and what have you, but it was, uh, you know, neutral territory, and the Germans were coming in, but it was not a place where, you know, where they could, you know, rule the, you know, like they did in Paris under the Vichy uh, regime. So now he's there running his cafe. He's built up a tremendous, uh, you know, a tremendous business model there as far as, you know, all the people would come to Rick's Cafe, and, uh, of course, one day she comes back into his life with Victor Laszlo. And, of course, now the Germans are there trying to basically, you know, run the, uh, you know, the French that are running Morocco. And they have to listen to them or else, you know, they could be taken by the Nazis. So in any case, uh, the first clip I want. And by the way, this movie was nominated for several Academy Awards. It did win Best Picture of the Year. Uh, let me just uh, that was in 19. 41 no 42 excuse me 1942 best picture of the year it also won for best director with michael curtis uh best uh, screenplay best writing and that that's really an uh, important part of this movie is the screenplay and the screenwriting because it was julius and philip epstein their brothers they they were known more for comedy believe it or not they wrote a very sarcastic clever witty dialogue in this movie many lines have come out of this movie and there's a lot of sarcasm all throughout the movie it's kind of they're kind of funny if you catch all the sarcasm in this movie but tremendous writing and then howard koch came in and he kind of added the romantic touch to the movie and anyway that won academy award as well and uh also claude rains was nominated for best supporting actor great great actor and he played the um he played the role of the um the french 
you know, like the police force that runs the French, and he's tremendous in this. So let's take a clip here. The first one I have is, and this is another one, that this, this song was known for its musical score. It's a Warner Brothers film. Of course, Jack Warner was known for his cheapness, but his right-hand man was Hal Wallace, and Hal Wallace was the driving force behind this movie. And here we have the theme song of this movie uh, of this movie is as time goes by let's take a look at this first clip and that's with um ingrid bergman and she sees uh she sees the piano player played by dooley wilson that she recognized from their time in france well you know there you got a little taste of it remember number one passion movie of all time uh he's pretty broken up about it at that point he you know he he just learned, of course, that uh, she's actually married to Victor Laszlo, and uh, he doesn't know what to think because she never told him that she was married when they were together in Paris. Uh, and of course, Victor Laszlo is, you know, famous or very uh, infamous as the uh, you know fighter of the Nazis uh, of the, you know, the Nazi resistance anyway in France. And now at that point in the movie, of course, the German Germans have totally overtaken France at that point. And uh, Victor Laszlo is still, you know, fighting against all the Nazis. He's escaped the uh, camp and she's reunited with his wife and they're fighting the cause right there. Uh, This next scene is really short. It's right after that. uh, Humphrey Bogart as Rick Blaine is absolutely agonizing over seeing her again. And this is a famous, you know, there's a lot of famous quotes from this movie, movie, by the way. You know, here's looking at you, kid, and so many others. But this is another famous scene from the movie. It's a quickie. I actually chopped them up really short this week. But check this out. Gin joints. There he starts reminiscing about their time in Paris. And there's a good, you know, 10, 12 minute segment about, you know, you see all the their interaction in Paris when they were falling in love. And it's, it's like I say, a very passionate love story. But, uh, you know, to me, the most powerful moment in this film, and it really goes to um the passion behind this movie and of course the timing of the release in 1942 right in the middle of world war ii um with the uh, nazi invasion of of paris and everything um at this point in the film you know you have germans uh, from the third reich are in morocco they're in casablanca and they're basically ordering around the chief of police who's a frenchman that was claude rains there telling him what to do and, of course, he has to play both sides of the fence. And, of course, Victor Laszlo, which is Ingrid Bergman's wife, or husband, I should say, uh, he's a, he's part of the resistance. And they know it, but they can't really do much about it because they're in neutral territory at this time. So Laszlo goes to Rick Blaine for the letters of transit, which he has. And these are, will allow anybody to fly out of Morocco. Uh, and he wants his help. And Rick Blaine says, no, I'm not going to help you. And he offers him a million francs or no, he offers him like a couple hundred thousand francs. And Rick Blaine says, Bogey tells him he wouldn't give it to him for a million francs, not two million, not three million. And he says, why? And he says, you have to ask your wife. So he's kind of holding a little bit of a grudge against him because, you know, he she Ingrid Bergman is with him. But at heart, Rick Blaine, the Bogey character, um, is a is a sentimentalist and he doesn't like the nazis either and so right after he tells right after bogey tells paul and reed as victor laszlo that he's not going to give him the letters of transit just then in rick's cafe the germans that are in there start singing some german nationalistic song and just overtaking rick's cafe and Victor Laszlo being the leader of the resistance that he is and the, you know, the Frenchman that he is, he gets, goes over to the band and he orders the band to start playing the French national anthem. And, um, it's a very powerful scene. It really is. Let's take a look at that. Viva la France. Well, you know, there you have it. Um, like I say, at that point, that's when Bogey started to shift and see what Victor Laszlo was doing. And, um, he started to sing the light and, you know, later, she comes up there and begs him for the for the letters of transit, and she even threatens to kill him. I mean, she has a gun and everything, and then they get they kind of get their love back for each other, and they decide that they're going to run off together, Bogey and uh, Ingrid Bergman. And then, of course, at the end of the movie, we're just going to cut to that real quickly here, and I've cut it very short here, but 
this is that kind of famous ending of the movie here. And um, let's let's take a look at that, and then we'll wrap this up. Well, you know, that end scene, of course, and then it, it plays out. They get off, and he ends up killing, Bogey ends up killing the, uh, the, the top German guy. And it's a great ending. It's a great movie. It's uh, kind of the theme and moral of the movie is that um, it shows that some values are worth making sacrifices for. And uh, that's why this was voted the number one passion film of all time. Because, you know, those two had a great love, but Bogey in the end realizes that she has to go with Victor to continue to fight the French. I mean, the French to continue to fight the, the Germans and the Nazis and lead the French. And, you know, and that was more important than, you know, their, their love affair. So there you have it. Casablanca. Did you enjoy that wing? Yes, absolutely. No, oh, come on now. No, no, seriously. No, it was. Well, cool. I know you were doing a lot of chatting there, no, which is fine. That's cool. The guys it's, are way too funny. I I couldn't catch up with their um, typings. Were very fast. Okay, but did you catch any of it at least? Yes, I did. Of course, I was staring uh, okay. at the same time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. You know, I hope you guys. And she's hot. Everybody wants you to know that. The, in, the lady, Ingrid Ingrid yeah, Bergman. She's yeah, hot. and Ginger is hot as well. You know, actually, I don't have the, it's out in the out in the green room here, but uh, you should go out and buy that. I've got a special collector's edition of uh, Casablanca, and it's got the two disc set where one set is all you know features, and there's a whole uh, segment on uh, with Bogart's son and also Ingrid Bergman's daughter talking about what this movie meant to their parents. It's really fascinating, and uh, you should go out and, and get that. I don't care, you know, where Barnes and Noble, Amazon, whatever. That's probably about 20 bucks, and it's yep. really well worth it. Great film. So let's give one more shout-out before we give away okay. the watch. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's show them now. To, here's what you're going to uh, get tonight, Wing. Tell them what this is. This is the giveaway tonight. Okay, what would I want to watch? <laughs> Seriously. Well, the, the one that says program, that's what's going out live, Wing. Okay. That's you. What do you want me to the, say? Well, that's you, and right. that's that's the watch that we're giving away right. tonight. That's the espionage uh, skeleton. All right. And All right. Fifty what, millimeter. What, what's so 15... special about it? Um, this watch here uh, is only one of a kind. Only one have ever produced uh, in the prototype, and the hands are different than the production one. And also the dial at the seven o'clock position, where it's supposed to have a cutout for the production, this one doesn't. So uh, very highly collectible. And the orange I picked out is for Larry. Um, okay, you know. and you co you save your prototypes, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, rarely, rarely, uh, you know. Do you ever part with them? No, I I, there, I still have a lot of them. Yeah, uh, you that I rarely up. ever yeah. part with them. Yeah. Well, it's going into somebody tonight. Here's your last chance to enter, and then we're going to do it. Uh, you must send an email to contact at acorn TV, and in the subject line, you're going to put the secret word, which is bogey. We just saw Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. That's the secret word tonight is bogey. Put it in the subject line. And in the body of the email, you put your name and phone number. Okay? Name and phone number. Go ahead. Any, anybody who hasn't entered, get it in now because uh, in a few minutes, we're going to do the, uh, the giveaway here. That's it. Last call. Last call. All right. Um, did, we had somebody on the phone. Were they waiting all that time? Are they still there? It was like Walter from New York. Walter, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here, Larry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Go ahead. What do you got? Okay, th terrific. The uh, uh, first thing I wanted to ask Wing, if it's okay. Wing, have you had any contact with uh, Horatio, Horatio Pagani there of, uh, of Zonda fame? Say that again. Uh, do I have any connections with what? So have you had any contact with uh, 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 Pagani, the fellow that makes the Zonda? Uh, um, the Zonda oh, car? I guess you saw. No, I do not. Okay, I've let me explain. I've been paying attention, Wing. Uh, there's this guy, uh, Zonda, uh, did I pronounce it correctly? He's a car designer in Italy, and he wears my alien watch. And no, I do not have connection with him. And matter of fact, how I found out was uh, one of the watch geeks emailed me the link of the YouTube video. He's wearing the alien watch and, uh, uh, and uh, introducing his Zonda car. And how much is that car? Quarter of a million dollars? Uh, it, it's, in the, it's in the millions because it's, it's, it's unbelievable million. as far yeah. as design is concerned. Yeah. Well, listen, well, well, you need to get in touch with them. Me. No. Yeah, uh, don't misunderstand. I didn't think you had any connection, but I was wondering if you had any contact with him since you saw the photo. No, and I... And actually, a question that I have for you and for Larry is, would you fellas consider presenting or showing your watches at, uh, at one of the big auctions in Monterey during Historic Car Week? Car guys or watch guys, et yep. cetera, et cetera. 
I mean, I think that'd be a great idea. I mean, I'm familiar with that uh, in Monterey. It's the Concourse de Elegance. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the Concourse de Elegance. I have a friend that uh, he goes there practically every year. He, in fact, he even used to he used to exhibit one of his show cars there. He had a uh, my friend Scott. Hey, if you're watching out there tonight, Scott, peace, love, and all good things. Uh, you know, give me a call, Scotty. But Scott had a 19, I believe it was a 1964 Mustang, and it was like the 13th car or the fourth car or the 13th car off the assembly line, and he spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, restoring that thing to perfect condition. And I remember when I went over to his house, he's got just this huge house up in Blackhawk, California, if you know where that is. And right. um, yeah, it's for real rich guys like Scott and Wing, by the way. No, but in any really. case, yeah. Oh, Thank cool. you, Larry. Though. Anyway, the there's, thing. There's the, several venues, Larry, like your, like your uh, uh, Concorso Italiano is one of the venues, the RM Auction and the, yeah. the Portolo Hotel, you see the Double Street. And of course, all the, uh, uh, the excitement that takes place at uh, both La Laguna Seca or. The Mazda International Raceway, the like to call it now, uh, and 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 of course Pebble Beach itself. So yeah, well, Pebble Beach. It's a tremendous array of stuff. It's yeah, well, incredible. Pebble Beach it might be the number one in the whole country. You know, the whole U.S. Really. Um, I, I I've been lucky, but I haven't been there in five years or so. Yeah, it's it, it's 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 an incredible experience. Um, anyway, I remember when you guys I, should go. It, it's 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 incredible. I mean, it's awesome. They they serve these like lemon freezes out there and i mean it's just a great day it's sunny and you know if it's not too windy that is but anyway uh scott had this 64 mustang and i remember i visited him and you know he keeps the thing all covered up in the garage and every i don't know every couple weeks or something like that he has to pour like a little gasoline in it or something or oil i don't know it just has to baby this thing and we, yeah, he's we claiming the carburetor, Larry. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that. I'm not that into that stuff. But anyway, he. That's what he would do. And um, I remember I went over there. We. This was probably, gosh, I want to say about, probably in the '70s, man. Maybe late '70s, early '80s, something like that. And I went over to his house, and he had that car, and he takes, he rolls the, the cover off of it, and he lubes the, get, puts a little whatever carburetor stuff in the carburetor, whatever, like you say. And he right. says, he says, come on. He says, you're going to take it for a spin around the block. I said, you're going to let me drive this? He didn't even let his own wife drive the car, okay? He never even hardly ever drove it. You know, I mean, it's like if you take it around the block, maybe that's it. And he said, go ahead, man. Get in the driver's seat. And he let me drive it around the block. And he had to go real careful with it. He took that show to the Concourse de Elegance. He took that car there. So uh, I think it's a great idea what you have there. Not sure what would be involved as far as, you know, working. I, I Working with the event know, organizers to allow us to exhibit there? Right, right. Well, I, I do know people involved, and I know people that actually race their vintage cars at Laguna Seca doing those events, and, and people that run some of the auctions and such. So maybe we can, we, I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're Facebook friends, so maybe we'll, uh, I'll be in touch with both you and Wing on this subject. I, I think it's, uh, it would be a, an awesome opportunity for both of you guys. Well, you know, the interesting thing about that idea is, you know, I don't know if they would want you to, you know, set up a, a merchandising display where you're actually selling product or just, you know, to be able to display product. But if you could set... At RM Auction, yes, Larry. Yeah, if, if At you... At RM Auction, they've got watches in one of the lobbies while the auctions are taking place. Yeah, if they would let us sell watches, we probably could sell a lot because of the, the price points. I mean, obviously, if, you know, if you had a Parmigiani Fleurier or you had a Richard Mill there, you know... People will look at those watches. They're not going to buy them because they're, you know, so expensive. They might buy one or two, well, but, you know, but you had watches with our price point swing, you know, $200 watches is like free. <laughs> I mean, that's like lunch money for these guys, you know. Right, absolutely. But uh, that's a great idea, Walter, and I, I, I like that idea. And, you know, I've, I've kind of thought about, you know, uh, supporting, you know, auto racing and, you know, show cars. And there's also a nice uh, concourse de elegance down in Santa Barbara, too, but nowhere on the, uh, on the scope of what's up in Monterey. Yeah, my, my, Monterey, as a matter of fact, it's, it's kind of difficult because it's a situation where you try to be at two or three places at the same time. It's very interesting. Yeah. Not a relaxing vacation, but stimulating indeed. Where in New York are you, Walter? Well, right now I'm calling from my old apartment. I'm visiting family in New York, and I'm going to zip back to... Uh, to Fitchburg uh, by the, uh, by early next week, uh, which ironically, my next door neighbor in Fitchburg is one of the big uh, Corvette restorers in the country. He's very famous. 
Yeah, well, where in New York are you? Are you in Manhattan? I, I'm, I'm, call, I'm, I'm calling from Manhattan, just south of the GW Bridge. Oh, okay. Near uh, Presbyterian Hospital. Yeah, okay. And I know, I know, I know the G Dub, just on the other mm-hmm. side in Fort Lee. I I had a friend in Fort Lee. We used to go over there all the time. But well, for, um, for those that know Dr. Oz, he, he operates out of the Milstein, which is there in Presbyterian. All right, very nice. And and you're going <laughs> you're going home. You're you're from Pittsburgh. Uh, well, I I. I, I Fitchburg is my, is my haven away from New York because we know that New York is an interesting town. I mean, I grew up and was, you know, and I was born and grew up in New York City, but uh, uh, to maintain my sanity since I'm a disabled veteran, I, I like to spend most of my time in Fitchburg. So I'm, but I'm visiting here with family right well, now. Well, when you go back to Pittsburgh, you know, have a nice Primonte Brothers sandwich for me, okay? <laughs> you bet. Because if I was living in Pittsburgh, I'd probably weigh 400 pounds by now. Um, well, I, 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 actually, forgive me. It's Fitchburg, Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying Pittsburgh, like in Pennsylvania. No, 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 that's what I thought too. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's my New York accent, Larry. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So you know, you're going to Massachusetts. Have some Boston baked beans then, or some Dunkin' no, no, Donuts. I won't do that. We'll, we'll have some sweets with Larry. Or Thank some you. clam chowder, <laughs> or some lobster. Ha- eat that something for me because I can't eat anything right now. All right. Oh, God bless. Well, listen, Walter, care, thank, thanks for participating. We'll be in touch, okay? Yeah, anytime. You bet. All right, thank take you, Walter. care. Take care, Wayne. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. All right, Wayne, listen, I want to go back here. We're, we're not going to spend all night. We want to take some more calls. If you have video Skype, let's try it again. I think we got that fixed, but maybe not. Um, okay, just you, you, you did a great, you know, 10,000 piece order with Sharper Image in 1996. The next question brings, to, I think, of is, the step to shop NBC because right. you were one of the, I mean, I know Earliest one, yeah. Cro- Croton was in there first, Yep. you know, Invicta came along, yep. but you were in the early days too. How did that happen? Uh, Lisa Catering, if I remember, if I pronounce her uh, last name, Catering, 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 Catering. Uh, so. yeah, yeah, she was, she was the buyer and um, she invited me and, uh, um, and Janelle, she was the assistant. I remember, I forgot it was 2002 or 2003, July, um, I did the first show, and everybody was shocked, uh, the, the respond um, after the first airing. I remember Janelle, she called me up, and when I was in Chicago after the show uh, from Minneapolis, I flew to Chicago, and she called me up, she said, congratulations, it was a, 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 a successful show, and then it started it all, you know, and then um, it was, and then became a regular show, so... That's how it was. I remember uh, uh, two pieces of watches was selling crazy. One was the Hydromatic, um, the third or the fourth generation. And then we also had another watch, very simple, uh, ultra thin, and we sold. I remember this. Back then, I don't know if you remember this or not, me and Tim, we sold one watch, 800 units, one watch, one color. We were like, Wow. That was unheard of back then. Of back, course, nowadays back then, you, on you average, do TTBs now, and you could do thousands. But back you know. then, on average, we sell we can easily sell three, four hundred watches on one watch. It was amazing era. Uh, mm. I remember my Hydromatic the first time we sold. Uh, I only had five hundred pieces in production. And just like that, sold out. You know, and I mean, the business is still good today. Very but, good. It's, but it, it's, but it's different. But it's different. It's tougher now. It, it's it's very tough. A lot of competition. And we we still do that kind of number, but it's more diverse in many different styles, you know, combined together. Right. But back then it was, uh, people saw, never seen Android, never seen Croton, never seen Invicta. And they just, uh, you know, act and uh, make the phone call and purchase. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, now, of course, Shop NBC is a big part of your business. and um, No, I got to, uh, let me right. repeat, not 800 pieces in one day. It's 800 pieces in one 15, airing. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, one airing. Yeah. I, I understand. And, yeah. I remember uh, in, I think it was my second or third appearance on Shop NBC. It was probably in January or February yeah. of 05. Yeah. Uh, we did like 1,100 pieces. Wow. Now, of course, this is like three years or four years later than right. you did yours in what, like 02, 03? 02, 03, yeah. Yeah, so 02, this is like three years. Year, yeah. This is three years later where the watch program had been built built yeah. up quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, we did like 1,100 pieces of our Delphi at 149. Now we're selling Delphi's two for 100. I mean, and you know, I mean. One airing? 
Eleven hundred. Yeah, we stayed wow. on that piece. Ken Martin was the the producer at that wow. time. The guy you went out to dinner with yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, of course now he's been moved up, but yeah. Ken was a producer. And in those days, it was a whole different thing. As yeah. you know, you were there. If a piece was hot, you yeah. stayed on that piece, yeah. and we stayed on that piece for seventeen minutes. And I still have wow. the uh, I still have the the video of it. Yeah. Um, until I mean, it was amazing, and it was at one forty nine. It was thirty dollar wow. mark down from one seventy nine. Wow. Skeleton. But you see what the prices are today. I mean, it's like now we're giving watches for free practically. But anyway, so Shop NBC is a big part of your business. Uh, let me get a quick count. How many, um, okay, let's let's call it closed now. The the drawing is closed. Uh, can you tell me, Ginger, how many? Um, 59 at the last call. 59, okay. Let me get a phone caller in here. 60? We got one more? Okay. Did, did the dupes get weeded out? Yep. Okay, all dupes are out. There's exactly 60. We need a caller here. Do we have a caller on the line yet? Okay. I need somebody out there to give us a quick call. If you have a question for Wing, give us a quick call. We're about to, um, we're about to show you something here. We're going to give the watch away. So somebody call in the number here on the screen, our Beverly Hills phone number, 310-734-8548. How do you see that? You're good. Well, it's on the top of the screen right there, above, the, above our monitor right, right. there. Right. That's how they call into the show. Oh, oh, call in here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. That's how these guys are calling in, Wing. Got it. it. This okay. is this is te high tech stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody wants to see Ginger. No, G Ginger's can't see hot. Ginger. No. Would you say Ginger is around twenty five years old? Uh, no, she's a little older than that. She oh, just looks. She young. looks twenty five. She yeah. looks twenty five. But she's, no, she's how, how five eight. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Very hot. Yeah, very hot. But uh, you didn't hear that, Ginger. All right, so we, we got to get a caller That's in here. That's why I'm here. I want somebody to call in and to, for, that has a question for Wing. Make up a question. I need a caller right now. All right, we've got someone coming in now on the line. She's getting it ready for us right now. So, Wing, um, while she's getting the call ready, it's going to be in in less than a minute here. Um, you know, we, we Shop NBC is a big part of your business. We're not going to talk about that anymore. We've had a great show tonight. This year was a first for you in 2011 and a first for Sterling at the same time. And it was coincidental because yeah. we didn't even say, let's both do it. No, I know, right. You know where I'm going, right? Yes, we, yes. We both exhibited at yes. Basel for the first time. Yes. And it was purely coincidental. Yes. Uh, well, we're going to get to that in just a second. Who's on the line? We almost got it. Okay, we almost got it. So, all right, let's do it. Caller, you're on the line. John from where? Hey, John. Uh, Seattle, Washington. Hey, John. Nice win by the Seahawks this weekend. Yeah, they were out of their element. They were just they were going crazy. I think mathematically they're still alive. My sister went to that game. She lives in Seattle, two blocks from Pike's Market. So, yeah, that's a good, good John, stadium. John, I want you to give us a number between 1 and 60. 1 and 60. Um... My birthday, 10. Did you say 10, like after 9 and before 11? 1-0. One, 1-0. Zero. One, zero. All right. Ronnie, let's go ahead and let's pull up the inbox. We're going to get to your question for Wing in just a minute. We're about to give away a watch. Okay. Can we uh, – I show I showed Ginger how to do it. Don't worry about Ginger. Let's, let's please get the thing here. This is our email inbox. These are all the, uh, all the entries. The number is 10, Ginger. When I say the number, I want you to click down one each time. Are you ready? All right. It's already on number one. Let's go to two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right. Open it up. All right, now do me a favor. Put the uh, oh, there it is. Go to go to about a two hundred percent screenshot, would you, Ginger? It's at the bottom right. Two hundred percent. I want to see it. Thomas George. You know, maybe next time we'll tell them to put their first name, city, and state. That way we can say Thomas George from L.A., California, or something like that. Not the phone number. Yeah, that's a good idea. Not the no. phone number. All right, there it is. All right, congratulations, Thomas George. Thomas George, I told you, very uh, transparent how we did it, completely fair. Thomas George, go ahead and uh, send us an email now with your shipping address. Thomas George, 
<laughs> send an email to contact. Don't erase the phone number right now because somebody's call. Well, just click off the shot yeah. already. Yeah. That's all. There we yeah. go. There you go. Okay, so very simple. Thomas George, you're the winner. Please send an email to contact at acorn.tv. <laughs> Tell us where you want the watch shipped, and Wing is going to pay for the shipping himself. He That's shipped. right. Because you didn't bring it, otherwise I would. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, so um, John, you're still on the line with Wing. What do you got for Wing? Well, uh, I wanted to. I saw this watch on Watch Geeks. It, uh, a guy named Josh called it a volcano in dress white. Okay. Yes. Are you, where can I get one of those? I think it might be sold out completely. And um, check with me. Uh, uh, Check with me. Uh, email me, please. Uh, What's your email address? Wing at android-usa.com. And I will make sure I will get back to you tomorrow. Uh, after I um, check our inventory tomorrow, I'll call the girls at the office and find out for you. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, it's AD388, 388. That's the, um, that's the one that I saw. It's a Swiss alarm. Nice. Uh, yeah, very cool. The original one, the first one. You know, yeah, very would, clean and nice. It would have been funny if John would have picked a number. He said, whatever the number is, 10, and we clicked down, it would have been him. That I would, know. It would be a miracle. Yeah. Of course, people would think it was fixed, but it's not. Uh, nicely you done. that last show. <laughs> no, last show was somebody different. No, actually, uh, George Thomas is my... Uh, oh, you know the guy who won? No, it's my real name. Actually, I emailed myself, oh. and I'm number 10. <laughs> and I'm sending... That's why I didn't bring the watch, because I'm sending the watch to myself. <laughs> no, that's bullshit. You were here the whole time. Yeah. You could, you no, I was typing. Everybody knows I was typing. You know? I know, but you couldn't have been emailing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, you got anything else, or is that it? Well, no, I'm a big collector of both your watches. You. I have uh, both tur- tourbillons. I have... Uh, Five of wings and one of I like the Dynasty Tourbillon from yep. Sterling. That was my first one. Cool. Because you were first out the gate. I, I saw that watch. I said I gotta have that one. It's a beautiful watch. It gets a lot of conversation in my circles where I meet people and everybody thinks it's a Cartier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It has that look to it. You know, we sold 985 in one day on that TTV of wow. that Tourbillon. And then you came out with yours, and you did like I think nine hundred and basically it was we almost did the same number. I mean, um, it was amazing. Which one are you? Uh, you had a tourbillon. The uh, anti gravity. It might have been the anti gravity. Yeah, it was right around this. Right around I think it was six fifty nine or six fifty seven. Six hundred fifty dollars in that price. Yeah, and ours was the same. Yeah. And we both sold almost the exact same number of watches in one day. Um, so that was really. I mean, you can't do that. In, I mean, now it's hard to. Try to sell a thousand tourbillons in one day now. Yeah, but and 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 matter of fact, uh, uh, unless we just give away the watch, the HZ three zero one zero, the price ever since I I, I talked to the the uh, PDS. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's you and me consumed the entire world production of the H three 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 one zero. Well, they, we know that we know yeah. that Mermelstein got a few of those. Well, that's later on. Yeah, and ever because of you and I combined together of. And we just literally drove the movement, the price up, um, 30, 40 percent. Yeah, I mean, that's that how they, they caliber, it's just yeah. supply and demand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they see that it's selling, and so yeah. they, they go up. Yeah. The HZ3310 is the, yeah. we call it our ST, not because we finish the movements. Right. But you do the same, but you keep the original numbers. You yes. don't, yeah, we, we change it because we finish, okay. the mov- we finish the movements. But in any case, um, uh, John, I want to thank you for participating, and thank you for, uh, you know, uh, picking out a winner tonight. I was glad to help. Okay. Have a nice evening. Thank you, John. You too. Uh, we still have quite a few viewers out there. You know, a few people uh, went home after they didn't win the watch, but uh, we still got nearly 50. If anybody else has anything for Wing before we call it a night, this will be the last call. Um, Wing, oh, I wanted to finish that point. Yes. Okay. So we both ended up uh, exhibiting uh, yeah. at Basel this year. Of course, you know, in, in my case, you know, it wasn't my decision. In your case, it was your decision. Mm-hmm. And I was happy that we did it and I enjoyed it over there. But uh, what was that all about? Why all of a sudden this year, Basel, and are you going back next year? Yes. Uh, matter of fact, today I was showing uh, 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 our buyer uh, the rendering of our new booth, our n- new custom booth. And uh, what's the reason why? Um, I think, as this is my personal point of view, uh, as a decision making, just same as uh, 14, 15 years ago um, when I 
made the money from Shopper Image. I invested it back into the business in marketing and all of that. And and, and going back to your answer, your question is um, as far as the design, I think we have that international ab- uh, appeal. You know, all the and uh, secondly is the quality. We're up there um, and. And I and I simply want to um, start my international distribution. I think our designs will um, will lead. Here's here's how I want to share with everybody is um, there's a lot of watch companies out there. I of course um, I, I I feel the design that I have is unique on its own, and I think we can lead the watch in- industry. You know, on a very specific, the Android look, um, our innovation, uh, the case construction, the movement we use, the quality. I think we can go international. That's why I made that decision. And it's very, very expensive um, to go to Basel. Um, it's, it's, it's not. And it's expensive. Expensive. Uh, Huge. Uh, just to share with you, uh, I don't want to talk about numbers. Uh, just simple, it's, it's a bot of water, you know, you, you call it $5. You know, we, crazy. I mean, you, you was that $5 Swiss it was, franc? It was, it was, I think, five Swiss francs Swiss for, franc. for a Diet Coke. Even a bot of water is five Swiss franc, which it, is like six American or 650 American, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Very expensive. Crazy. And of course, you and I stayed at, we stayed pretty much together. We took the train in yep. every day. We in stayed, Zurich. We stayed yeah. in Zurich. I think, yeah. you know, next year I might lean towards Lucerne, maybe. No, we're staying in Germany. Oh, you're going to 20 that minutes. Short. Yeah, it's short. 20, it's 20 shorter. minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's short. Because uh, riding on the train for an hour and a half, two hours is uh, very tiring. It's going to drain out my energy. So we, we are right. We already had, we have to book and reserve our hotel rooms already. I, I'm not be sure sold if I'm out. even going. I may not be right. going, you know, but. So but we already booked our, uh, yeah. our, our hotel. We're going to stay in the Germany side, uh, okay. which is like 15, 20 minutes from Basel. Is so. more expensive? It's about the same price. It's, you know how it is. It's crazy. Zurich was yeah. really expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I was glad we stayed in the same hotel. We took yeah. the train together. Your sister. We had fun together, yeah. Yeah, it was great. But uh, yeah, same thing for us. You know, I think the international distribution is important. Um, also, I mean, there is a certain reality, to be honest, that, you know, we can get better margins. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's that's the business side of it. The American market is so tight. Mm. You can't really make any money. Uh, I think we we educate our customers. Uh, our our customers are getting smarter and smarter. They, you know, all of you are, are still with us. Um, you have the knowledge of the movements already. Right. You, you know, uh, seriously, that the knowledge of our customers um, is far more than any average. Uh, customers walk into any department stores. You know when they buy that fashion brand, they, they know more they, than the people behind the counter. Or, absolute, the shop NBC absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's amazing. You guys understand about the construction of the case, the quality. You guys know how to check a watch better than in you know even uh, even a high end department stores buy it. That's that's how we call it. Yeah. Well, I hope I get to go back this year. I'll find out later. It depends on the schedule with Shop NBC and everything like that. Uh, okay, do we have one last caller? I'll take one more call tonight. Is he on the phone? Ken from Florida. This is the last call of the night, and then we're going to say good night. What do you got, Ken? Hey, Larry. How you doing tonight? Good hey, evening, Wing. Hey, uh, Ken. I called last weekend, and I'm calling this weekend. Wing, a couple of questions yes. for you. Um, are you thinking about ever coming out with the Dive Master Enforcer in a smaller size, like 45, 46 millimeter? 45, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm proud and I'm happy to share with all of you because it has been confirmed. Our T100 automatic Dive Master Enforcer is coming out in February. The exact date we have not set up yet, and the price will be quite shocking. Uh, literally, we're giving it away, and literally, we're selling below cost. Uh, stay with us. It's going to have two sizes. Is Stan going to go crazy now? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it because uh, Stan might be watching our show right now and uh, <laughs> said he's going to get upset. Okay. And uh, um, the, uh, it's going to have two sizes, 50 and 45 millimeter. And later on, um, I will be uh, showing more pictures of the watch what's and the, so forth. What's the water resistance on that? 200 one? meters certified uh, uh, water resistance. Screw down crown, exhibition case back. You know, very nice. I, I saw it. Um, uh, so uh, please stay tuned. And it's going to be below $200, okay? Uh, that's that's it. A, that was a great question right there, below Ken. Below $200. Because, uh, 
I, I've seen that watch. Yeah. It's a beauty, but yeah. it is it is a big one. So at 45, I think that's going to bring well, a lot more people into the Yes, game. 45 and 50. Now, now, if you have seen my leather strap, the T25 Enforcer, let me uh, compare side by side. We, uh, The T25 Enforcer leather strap, Quartz Ronda, was selling 199 at Shop NPC. Okay, now here's the thing. The new one is going to come out with stainless steel bracelet, 5 millimeter thick. From T25, we're going to ex extend it to T100, okay? From Quartz, we're going to extend it to the NH35 Seiko automatic movement. That's and then the 45, five. yeah, automatic. And the, uh, the 45 will be the NH15 because of the size of the case. We had to go one size uh, smaller. So you can imagine um, the, the T25, da da da, you know, it was 199 with all this, including the bracelet, I know a lot of you guys bought the bracelet for $90 alone, uh, directly from us. We're having all of that below $200, okay? It's, it's little, awesome. we're giving it away. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's my honor, and I hope everybody enjoys the watch as much as I do. You got one more last oh, one, Ken? I, I want to have a question, uh, Ken. Where are, you from, where are you calling from from Florida? I'm in a little town called Milton, Florida, up in the Panhandle near Pensacola. Okay, very cool. Um, uh, and I was going to try to get down to the Watch Geeks get-together this year, but unfortunately my uh, uh, finances couldn't do it. And okay. my, uh, we, I've got a new baby. He's going to be two here in this coming February. So it's, uh, it's, it's just a little bit rough right now for us uh, money-wise, but I'm going to try to get down there next year uh, if they have it again. 2012, uh, yes. And also, yeah, one of the questions I wanted to ask, uh, the Usain Mechanical that you brought out uh, to shop, the uh, Black Mother Pearl, Black Dial. Uh, black Case. And everything. Yeah, the Black Case and everything. Have you ever thought about coming out with that in an automatic movement? Because I've seen the use, I've got a Usine in a mechanical, I've got a Usine in the quartz movement, and I'd love to see one in a automatic movement because that's just really a nice watch. Um, I will consider it, but at this point, uh, there's no uh, plan on the pipeline. So, um, okay. So, yeah. Thank you, Ken. All right, thank you guys, and Wing and Larry, both y'all make great watches. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, thank Ken. you, Ken. Well, Wing, uh, that's going to bring us to uh, the closeout. And what I do, if you haven't seen my show before, I end every show. I have. Okay, I, I, have. I end every show with the Judy Garland segment. She's my favorite. So, um, you know, I got to have a little Judy in every show. And so, uh, this one is pretty short. We're going to go to our segment now. Always chasing rainbows. Watch this. Okay. All right, like I said, every show I have to have just a little bit of Judy Garland. I grew up, you know, with my mom. That was her favorite. And, of course, we'd sit around the TV and we'd watch Judy. And, uh, you know, brings me back to her TV special. You know, I mean, her TV show, 1962-63. And she would have her Judy Garland Christmas special as part of the uh, package. And in 1963, uh, in December, her Christmas special... Um, it was pretty memorable. It's out there on DVD. You can get it and everything like that. But I'm going to show a quick song. It's that time of the year. Uh, but, you know, before we do, before we do, uh, I want to just say this. Next week, we're going to have Avi Vieira from Exoskeleton is going to be here guesting the show. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, but it, we're, the show's going to be on Wednesday night. Starting next week, instead of Thursday nights, we're going to go Wednesday nights moving forward uh, back to Wednesday night. We put it on Thursday nights for the uh, X Factor season. Now it's the last week. So starting next Wednesday, uh, it's going to be Chilling with Larry and Megan on Wednesday nights, 11 p.m. And we're going to have Avi on the show. And I think we have a picture of Wing and Avi together. Uh, if you can find that picture. Now, where was this taken, Wing? Uh, the uh, Invicta Watch Geeks get together. Okay, now who took it? Was it your wife that took this picture? I wouldn't take that picture if my wife was there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you would. No, I wouldn't. She's not jealous. 
Of course not. She's listening right now. Oh, okay. I'm, so should we show that picture again? Oh, no, it's not a problem. Oh, okay. okay. I know. Well, you, I got it off your Facebook page, so it couldn't be okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> I got it off your photo album. So, But there's Avi. She's from Exoskeleton. And next week, we'll show more pictures of Avi. She's got quite a few on her Facebook page. But um, she's anxious to do this. And uh, her and I have some... Uh, have some common interest. Yeah, too. that's not my face. That's Photoshop. You know how they did the uh, uh, Michael, okay. Michael on Facebook with the Santa Claus. And oh, so that's it. really not you with Abby? That's not me. That's Tim. That's Tim <laughs> Temple. And okay. they, 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 they Facebook, they, they Facebook that Chinese they face. They superimposed right. your face on Tim's Look, body. T- m- m- real life, I'm about five foot two inches tall. Avi. This guy is taller than Avi. That must be Tim. Okay, Tim, right. Tim is a giant. Well, anyway. Seven uh, foot tall. I got, a, I got a special Judy Garland segment with Avi next week uh, because, you know, actually she likes a lot of the retro things and the older yep. classic films and all that. But anyway, it's that time of the year. This is from Judy's Christmas special, 1963. Her musical director on the show was Mel Torme. And, of course, Mel Torme wrote one of the all-time great Christmas songs, maybe the greatest Christmas song of all time, when he was only 19 years old. And here, um, of course, as a stroke of genius, he called it the Christmas song. <laughs> and that's what it is. And it was written by Mel Torme when he was 19, and he's Judy's musical director for the show. And he's playing the piano, and Judy sits down and has some fun. She botches up a few of the lyrics, but uh, it was a good time for all. It's that time of year. Let's go to it right now. Yes. All through the year we waited, waited through spring and fall, to hear silver bells ringing and winter time bringing the happiest season of all. And I wish Judy Garland would sing the chorus in her own time. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir and folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows. Turkey and some mistletoe Help to make the season bright Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow Will find it hard to sleep tonight They know that Seth is on his way Load of lots of gifts and toys are in his sleigh. Close. <laughs> and every mother's child is gonna spy to see if rainbows really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from one to ninety-two. Have a go at them some old English, shall we? Yes. Love and joy come to you and to all your loved ones too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new year. <laughs> Well, listen, that's it. It was a great show tonight. Wing, did you like that? It was uh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to coming and uh, doing this again sometime. W- w- wait a minute. What happened to Wing, man? What'd you do with Wing? Got a bathroom break. A bathroom break. All right, Wing, get on in here. <laughs> right here. What up? What up? Yeah. Go, uh, on, the way, go on this side. Go on this I, side. I, well, by the way, yeah. I'm Ginger. 
<laughs> Wing, any last words for your loyal no, um, fans? Just want to say thank you, everybody. I had a great, successful rotation, and I couldn't do it without all of you. All right. Guys, until next week, remember, always uh, keep pursuing your dreams. Keep following your goals. Always keep chasing those rainbows. I'm Larry Megan. Peace, love, and all good things. Chill, chill, chill. With Larry Megan, Larry.